there's no question that uh, there's insight to be gained by mining data on uh, government programs and government transactions. So we thought it was important to uh, take the discussion of opening up government uh, all the way from what citizens expect in terms of data being released and uh, what it means in terms of competitions uh, for applications to be developed uh, and the, the question of responsiveness through social media channels back inside of government to be able to say, but government has all of this data that not all of which could be made available uh, to the public given confidentiality and other type constraints. But we see a lot in uh, major corporations around trying to understand uh, where value is, where insight is in terms of effectiveness of, uh, of programs, mark whether they be marketing campaigns or in this case uh, public health spending. So one of the things that we're seeing is that there's been a there's a there's a lot of money spent by governments on uh, what's referred to as legacy system renewal or transformation, which is intended to help uh, make data more available for information and decision making. And one of the observations that we've had is that uh, while those investments need to be made, there's opportunity along that journey uh, for governments to be more effective at how they access data from their program areas and use that to help guide policy design and, and uh, hopefully provide better service to citizens in major areas like health care, justice, education. Right. Well, we're seeing in the, in the private sector, in different industries, essentially, we're seeing companies and organizations who are able to rise to the top of their industries because of how well they use their data, how the anal data analytics, uh, the Oakland Athletics, of course, and in, in, in baseball were, were mm -hmm. famous for this. And now, you know, whether it's football, basketball, many other uh, um, sports have followed that kind of model of looking at data analytics. In the entertainment industry, Harris out of uh, out of Vegas is famous for its its use of data. And you go on and on. And right now, in the public policy world, you, you know, increasingly people are saying that ideology or what your beliefs are or philosophy, that's not enough. We, we want evidence-based public policy. We want to look at the data, understand what the data is, and one of the problems is we don't always either have all that data available today or we don't have the capabilities of thoroughly analyzing it in a real-time fashion so we can make those good decisions uh, from an evidence-based. And so I think it's going to be very, very important, not only operationally, but the data analytics is going to be important for making government smarter in terms of developing public policy and policy from an evidence-based as opposed to at least simply from an ideology-based approach. Yeah, and the, the challenge of, uh, I think one of the implications of opening up data to citizens is that uh, they will be able to work through, citizens or business or, or not-for-profits, will be able to look at, look at government programs across a number of dimensions and uh, to be able to, to make recommendations, to, to challenge, to critique, to make suggestions of, of governments in terms of program areas. And I think that will increasingly have governments asking themselves, not only can we leverage that right. uh, resource, but we need to get better at understanding uh, what the cross-program implications are of things right. that we do. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that the where this can go is just really limitless. We've already seen in the crime area, essentially, that's where probably we've had the most sophisticated use of data to improve government. In some cities, we've seen 50% or more reductions in crime through the use of the Comstat kind of model, which was developed in New York City, which is all about understanding in a very, very detailed way where the crime is occurring on a daily basis, deploying more police officers there and deploying different kind of techniques to address those individual aspects of crime. And, you know, we're, we saw the same thing. We're, we're seeing it being used in whether in Iraq and Afghanistan and other places. But um, I think taking that from that area and pulling it out you know, to education, to many other areas is going to be really, really important. We have the ability now through data to understand how an individual ch child is learning and what kind of techniques are working for them or not working on a daily basis and then tweaking and changing those as opposed to a, as a student basically having to use you know, a textbook which may have been developed 10 years ago that has uh, not working very well for them. And that's where we need to start using this data to. I think be personalizing a lot of some of these services for citizens, businesses, and others.